This is part 111 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing server-side processing for jQuery data tables plugin. This is continuation to parts 109 and 110. In part 109, we discussed implementing a stored procedure that can perform paging, sorting and filtering. And in part 110, we implemented ASP.NET generic handler that calls the stored procedure, retrieves the data and converts that data to JSON format. In this video, we'll discuss how to display that JSON formatted data using jQuery Data Tables plugin. So here is the request response cycle between those three components. So the jQuery Data Tables plugin is going to issue a request to the ASP.NET Generic Handler. The ASP.NET Generic Handler will then call the database stored procedure, retrieves the data and converts that data to JSON format. And then that JSON formatted data will then be displayed by the jQuery Data Tables plugin on the web page. So let's look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Notice here we have our employee data handler that we implemented in the previous video session. So this generic handler is calling this stored procedure SP get employees. I've also added a web form to this project and within the body section I've included an HTML table. I've given it an ID data table. And then within the head section in that table, I've included the headers for our table. So basically we want ID, first name, last name, gender, and job title, column headers. So that's what I have specified within the T head section here. Now within our jQuery ready function, let's find this data table using the jQuery ID selector. And on that, let's call data table function. And we need to specify our options. So the first thing that we need to do is specify the columns that we want to bind to. So basically, if you look at what this handler is doing, so it's actually returning us, you know, this object result. So what are we doing with that object? We are serializing that to JSON format. And if you look at this AA data property, it contains list of employees. And if you look at each of the employee object, Notice that these are the properties that are present in that object. ID, first name, last name, gender, job title. So here, what we are going to do is specify the properties that we want to bind to. Okay, and we specify that using columns. So columns, this is going to be an array. And this is going to be an array of JSON objects. So data and the first property that I want to bind to is ID. So because if you look at what we have in the header, first we have ID, then first name, last name, gender, and job title. Okay, so let's specify the other properties that we want to bind to. So ID, first name, last name, gender, and finally, job title okay so those are the columns and the next thing that I want to specify is server-side processing so we want to basically tell jQuery data tables plugin that you know we want server-side processing and we do that using B server-side option so the B letter here before that option name specifies that it is a boolean option meaning we can either set to true or false so since we want server-side processing, I'm going to set it to true. And it's not enough if you just specify that you want server-side processing. We also want to tell it about the resource that is going to provide the data, that is the server-side data. In our case, this employee data handler is the one which will provide us the required data, that is the sorted, filtered, and paged data. We specify that using yes, Ajax source. Again, S in front of the option name specifies that this is a string option, meaning, you know, we need to provide it a string value. And, you know, the employee data handler is the external resource that's going to provide us the data that this plugin requires. That's it. So those are the three options that we need to specify. So let's save our changes. Let's go ahead and run this and it should retrieve the server-side data. Look at that. In the table, we have got 14 rows. 
So let's go ahead and select all the rows from the table. So notice that we have got 14 rows in the table. All the 14 rows are displayed. And look at this. When I click on first name, the data is sorted by first name. So all this processing now is happening on the server side. The stored procedure is doing uh, this for us. Similarly, when I click on the first name again, the data is sorted in the descending order by first name. Sort by gender. Look at that. Similarly, sort by job title. And the filtering should also work. Look at this. For example, if I type female within the DB, we have got four females. And look at that. It, it displays all the four female employees. And look at what the status says here, showing one to four of four entries filtered from 14 total entries. So how does the data table know about this? That is from these two options that we have specified, the total records that we have in the table, and the filtered count. Now, if we type, for example, you know, SR, look at that, it displays all the senior developers. There are eight senior developers. It says one to eight of eight entries filtered from 14 total entries. And look at this. The moment I start deleting them, the data in that table is dynamically updated. And paging should also work. So on the first page, we have 1 to 10 rows. Let's click on ID. Look at that. Data is sorted by ID in ascending order, 1 to 10 rows. And when I click on the second page, we should get from 11 to 14. And look at the status text here. So paging, sorting, filtering, everything is working as expected. All this processing is being done on the server side by, by our stored procedure. So in this video here, we're using the employee data handler. I mean, this is the ASP.NET generic handler. So we are implementing server-side processing using ASP.NET generic handler. In our next video, we'll discuss how to do this server-side processing using ASP.NET web servers. So here is the HTML code and the jQuery code. Now, if you look at this table, we have the column names only in the header. If you want them in the footer as well, then what you can do is include the foot section and specify the column names there as well. So let's save our changes, reload this page. Now we should get column names both in the header and footer. So the HTML here and the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.